drink of kings and princes, poets and politicians. Scotch is embraced by a new generation of drinkers as a proud symbol of national pride and global success. I'm Ewan Gunn, Global Scotch Whiskey Master, and I'm going to take you on a whistle-stop tour to find out more about why Scotch is the world's favourite whisky. Did you know that Scotch sells more in terms of value and volume than any other international whisky and is known and loved globally? Scotch has long been known as Aquavitae, the water of life. It's the pride of Scotland, exported from our homeland to millions of bars everywhere. The world's favourite whisky was born in Scotland over 500 years ago and made the same way today as footprint stretches from the romantic west coast through the whisky heartland of Speyside to the vibrant urban central belt. The timelessness and magic of Scotch is encapsulated in our distilleries, scattered all over Scotland, many at the heart of their communities. Some, like Lagavulin and Talisker, are in heartbreakingly romantic locations. Others, like Mordlach, veil the mysteries of their spirit with an impenetrable complexity. Through these distilleries, we make the very best grain whisky and the very best malt whiskies, all to make sure that we can craft the very best blends, including the world's most valuable spirit, Johnny Walker. Here are some Scotch facts. Scotch can only be made in Scotland. Scotch can only be matured in oak casks. A blended Scotch can potentially contain over 100 different Scotch whiskies. The age on a bottle of any single malt or blended scotch refers to the youngest whisky in the mixture. There are just over 100 distilleries in Scotland. Every drop of scotch in the world will have come from one or more of them. Scotch whisky offers a wider range of tastes, textures and flavours than any other type of spirit. Making scotch inspires a passion rarely found in these modern times, shared by those in large and small companies alike. We're proud to have generations of craftsmen in our coppersmiths, cooperage, maltings, distilleries and warehouses, all carrying on their family traditions in whisky making and sharing their skill, experience and enthusiasm with newcomers. So how do we make it? Well, let's first talk about how we make single malts, because they tend to have a wide variety of flavour and style. Only three basic raw materials are used to make scotch. Water, cereals and yeast. The first step is malting, which is done in three stages. First of all, steeping, when the barley is soaked in water, and then germination, where the barley starts to grow and generate energy. And lastly, kilning, where we halt the growing process. During kilning, we can choose to add peat smoke. This is peat. And depending on how much peat smoke we expose the barley to, we'll achieve differing levels of smokiness in the final whiskey. Some examples of heavily peated whiskey would be Lagavulin or Colila. A medium peated whiskey would be Talisker. And a great example of a lightly peated whiskey would be Oban. And finally, an unpeated whiskey. Cardu is a, a great example. The next building block of flavor is mashing. Mashing is when we take the crushed up barley and drain water through it. Initially at a temperature of around 64 degrees centigrade, but increasing over time. And this extracts the fermentable sugars needed to make alcohol. Fermenting is the next building block of flavor. We take the sweet liquid from the mashing, we cool it down, and we add yeast to make alcohol for the very first time. At this stage, we're basically making a beer. There'll be roughly eight or 9% alcohol by volume. But how long we leave it after the alcohol has been created makes for a marked difference in the final character of the spirit. The beer is now called wash. Distillation is the next building block of flavor. The wash is distilled in copper pot stills. Now alcohol boils at a lower temperature than water, and as long as we keep the boiling temperature a bit below 100 degrees centigrade, the water stays and the alcohol separates as a vapor, and is then cooled back down to a liquid. The first time we do this, the end product is still not strong enough to be called a spirit, and we call this liquid low wines. Now traditionally in Scotland, we do a double distillation. So we distill the low wines a further time, and after this second distillation, we'll have a spirit of approximately 70% alcohol by volume. Distilling slowly allows lots of copper contact, and this gives you a light and delicate spirit. Distilling quickly, on the other hand, minimizes copper contact, and this gives you a heavier, oilier spirit. The final building block of flavor is maturation, and is one of the most influential, as between 30 and 70% of the final flavour profile can come from the cask. 
And that's why having a good wood policy and skilled coopers is imperative if you want to have great scotch. Main species are American oak, which tends to give vanilla and caramel sweetness, and of course, European oak, which tends to give richer, fruitier notes. Most blended Scotch whiskies and many single malts will contain a combination of both styles. The final stage, often taking place many years later, is blending. In the case of a single malt Scotch whisky, this is when several casks from the same one distillery are blended together to create a consistently great liquid. In the case of a blended Scotch whisky, this is when many casks of Scotch from single malt and single grain distilleries are combined by our skilled team of blenders to create a consistent, balanced and excellent liquid. There's never been a right or wrong way to enjoy your scotch. From classic cocktails on the menus of the great hotel bars a century ago, to unusual serves in the hipster bars of Hoxton, Kreuzberg and Williamsburg, scotch cocktails have always been cool.